Uh, excuse me. Yeah. Can you bring the microphone closer? Oh, yeah. Like this. That's fine. Truthfulness as self-responsibility towards co-responsibility and application of the idea of truthfulness from a transcendental pragmatic point of view. In my first lecture, I already have announced that I intend to confine the topic scope and limits of discourse ethics to have or to others transcendental pragmatic version of discourse ethics. I also said that therefore, I also want to adopt his distinction of a part A, which deals with grounding of discourse ethics, and a part B, which deals with its application. Thus, today, in the second of my two lectures, I will discuss the following questions pertaining to the scope and limits of discourse ethics in light of part B. How shall we deal with norms of discourse ethics which are founded on counterfactual ideal presuppositions of argumentative discourse in situations of conflict under real life conditions. Amongst discourse ethics, ethics, this question of applications of ideality to reality is debated controversially. Karl Otto Apple, in the following action, only referred to him as Apple, provides Ah, uh, now it works. <laughs> now it's too close, huh? So close now? Um, yeah, Kaoto Abel provides an answer to this question, which is often seen as too radical demarcation between foundation and application of discord ethics. He states, that real conditions are characterized by two circumstances which make it difficult or even possible to apply norms of discourse ethics to real life. Firstly, people have to assume an already assigned conventional responsibility towards their fellow human beings. Secondly, often conditions are given characterized by non-reciprocal willingness to solve conflicts by discourse and to comply with norms of discourse ethics. Under these conditions, Arthur argues that in many cases it is unreasonable to demand solving of conflicts by discourse and comply with norms of discourse ethics, specifically due to the reasons of ethics of responsibility. Rather, Actors, actors under such conditions have to speak and act in forcibly strategy counter strategical. In other words, Arthur suggests that the ethical implication of part A of the foundation of discourse ethics are not unrestrictedly valid for application to reality. At this point, I would like to interrupt my speech at, oh, my speech, sorry, in order to make sure whether I sufficiently clarified the issue of the real social circumstances in order to make it understandable why applying the norms of discourse ethics may lead into moral dilemmas or can be unacceptable. Bueno, en breve, este, esto es una añadidura por parte de la doctora Apple. En este punto quisiera interrumpir mi conferencia para asegurar si es suficientemente clara, claro el tema de las circunstancias sociales reales para ser inteligible de por qué las normas de la ética discursiva pueden conducir a un dilema moral o pueden llegar a ser no aceptables. Por lo que se abre al público este, Preguntas, es lo que puede decir este, la doctora Apple. ¿Preguntas? ¿Alguien? ¿Está bien? ¿Sí? 
So it, it, it's, it's clear for you why in real, under real conditions where people not comply towards ethical norms and uh, there is no willingness, reciprocal willingness of all persons to solve their problems by, by discourse. In other words, you are trying to explain why la gente eh, no puede ser porque la gente no puede ser recíproca en condiciones reales de, de acuerdo con las normas de la ética discursiva brevemente eso es lo que está tratando de aclarar no es obviamente una traducción literal so in this, under these conditions Apple states that y en estas condiciones Apple declara que the people are enforced to que la gente está obligada a to act strategic, strategical, eh, de, está obligada a actuar de manera estratégica porque es inaceptable para la gente misma for example, to, por ejemplo um, to danger themselves, para ponerse a sí misma en peligro o, or others, o a otras personas by acting in a discourse ethical way eh, al actuar de una manera discursivamente ética while others are acting strategically mientras otros actúan de manera estratégica if this for you um, understand, uh, um, understand, um, es plausible, plausible. <laughs> es inteligible el, y es plausible para ustedes esto es lo que estaba preguntando yeah. So that was for me important to make this clear because this is our the point of departure for today. Es importante para mí este, que esto sea claro porque precisamente este es el punto de partida para la conferencia de hoy. For the so-called part B. Para la llamada parte B de la ética discursiva. Pero, pero qué tiene como estratégico con cálculo? Uh, what do you mean by strategic or strategical by calculated means or yeah the strategic means that you pursue your own purposes los medios estratégicos con los cuales uno persigue sus propios fines o propósitos in a, uh, in a manner of using force in el sentido de utilizar la fuerza or using deceiving o utilizar el, eh, estrategias del engaño But not in, in, as opposed to en oposición a o contra to act in a discourse or in a moral normal in a moral way eh, para actuar de una manera ética o moral dentro del discurso so the problem is if, the, if, if one part por lo que el problema es que si una parte de las personas no están actuando de una manera moral for the others, para otras personas it can be unresponsible, puede ser algo irresponsable or, or unacceptable, o inaceptable uh, to act unilaterally, para, unilaterally, uh, para yeah, actuar para actuar unilateralmente de su propia parte. And that's the problem Abel saw and he said, okay, that's why we need part B for the application of this ethics. Y ese es el problema que vio Abel y por eso dijo que se necesitaba una parte A, parte B, disculpen, una parte B para la aplicación de la de la ética discursiva misma. Okay. Hence part A has to be supplemented by Part B of application. In regards to Part B, Apple provides for a principle of complementarity, which is supposed to compensate the non-compliance of discourse conflict solution, as well as non-compliance with norms of discourse ethics. This principle is supposed to facilitate kind of twofold moral long-term strategy for speech acts on acts. Firstly, the strategic counter strategical speech acts and acts ought to be oriented towards preservation of humanity and towards preservation of the achieved status within the meaning of the conditions of part A. 
this orientation ought to take into consideration the discourse a priori, a priori of the real community of discourse. Secondly, acts of part B ought to be orientated towards development of improving the conditions in the long run in direction of the ideal of part A within the meaning of a regulative idea. This orientation ought to take into consideration the discourse a priori of the ideal community of discourse. However, I note a key issue in regards to Apple's reasoning in respect of the demarcation between foundation and part A and application of discourse ethics in part B. Namely, on the one hand, norms of discourse ethics are not supposed to be valid unrestrictedly, which is justified from an ethical perspective on responsibility, by which he decidedly distances himself from Kant's imperative of rigoristic ethics of conviction. But on the other hand, this ethical perspective on, on responsibility is yet founded on discourse ethics since condition of possibility of knowledge in regard to the practical question, what ought we to do, from a transcendental pragmatic point of view, must lie in raising and redeeming intersubjective validity claims in discourse. Thus, in discourse ethics of Apple's provenience, the issue of part B is that on the one hand, the perspective of ethics of responsibility only becomes apparent from a discourse ethic point of view. Yet, on the other hand, the perspective of ethics of responsibility ought to be the very reason for the abolishment of applicability of discourse ethics in reality. This, however, is paradoxical. It does not become more convincing by Apple's note in regards to Max Weber's distinction of ethics, on convic of, con of ethics of conviction versus ethics of responsibility, justifying the necessity of perspective of ethics of responsibility. This, however, would be quite absurd if Max Weber's point were to lift out Apple's ultimate foundation. In this case, the concept of ultimate foundation would be pointless. Thus, the duty to responsibility of all speech acts and acts in reality, in the sense of ethics of res responsibility, rather has to emanate out of the ultimate foundation itself. Indeed, this should be possible without leading the ultimate foundation at absurdum by concurrently withdrawing its implications of ethics of responsibility in reality again. Let us therefore pick up another reference by Apple which seems to satisfy the latter condition. He also emphasizes that despite the withdrawal in regards to application of norms of discourse ethics in Part B, the, primor the primordial principle of discourse has to persist for Part B lapwards. In this regard, however, we have to question how this can be realized. I would like to answer this question directly by referring to concept of the third level of truthfulness as already introduced in the previous lecture. From my point of view, the primordial principle of discourse, which indeed also has to stay valid in part B, under the non-ideal conditions of reality, can only be realized at this third level of truthfulness, provided that one wants to escape the named paradox. Thus, I would like to repeat, in short, what the three levels of truthfulness signify. For that matter, I shall relate these levels to two 
systematically different cases of application in reality. In regard to the first case, we picture speech actors representing diverse interest groups who are prepared and strive towards solving conflicts by a discourse as it will mean. This implies that by reason of forces forth of the better argument, Habermas, they endeavor to reach consensus as equal discourse partners. The moral obligation which they have already, already, always already acknowledged for discourse can be specified in the following mentioned three meaning critical levels of their truthfulness, by which they mean their speech act and acts really in a strong and in a strong sense. The first level is based on the performative propositional double structure of a speech act like hereby I assert A or hereby I'm doing B, which accompanies every self-conscious act. To be truthful on this level means, simply means, that it is that in his propositional act, the speaker says what he himself really means in the sense of being honest as opposed to lying. At the same time, by his performative act or act, a speaker or an actor has to express what he himself really intends in a sense of acting transparently as opposed to deciding. The second level we can recognize from a meaning critical perspective. For the performative propositional double structure implies the secondary intersubjective objectification and therefore the possibility of criticism of speech acts in present and future. Accordingly, to be truthful at this level means that a speaker or actor who really means what he says or what he acts has to comply at least with the following norms. Firstly, raising validity claims in regards of the intersubjective possible criticism and raising them sincerely instead of just pretending to raise them. Secondly, give reasons for race validity claims as good as possible, not even towards a real community of discourse, but also towards an anticipated ideal community of discourse. Thirdly, accept accepting any other person as a discourse partner in argumentative discourse sharing equal rights. Fourthly, argument in a consensus oriented way. The third level stands out from the two first levels by reason of its reflection on acting at these two first levels as an acting with effect and with direct and indirect consequences which has to be justified. Thus, at this third level of truthfulness, the speaker or actor assumes self-responsible towards oops, sorry. Assume, oh, sorry. Thus, at this third level of truthfulness, the speaker or actor assumes self-responsibility towards co-responsibility with and against all discourse partners in regards of all human action. However, in the case discussed here, which is characterized by ideal conditions in respect to reciproc reciprocally compliance of norms of discourse ethics on both first levels, the third level of truthfulness is redundant. Since, due to the ultimate foundation, speech acts and acts solving conflicts by discourse ethical means under compliance of norms of discourse ethics are justified per se. However, in regard to the second case, we picture conditions of often observed in reality. 
groups with opposing interests who are not prepared to solve their conflicts discursively, but look to enforce their interests by use of open strategic deciding force. In this case, it can be unreasonably disadvantaged and even dangerous for actors adhering unilaterally to discourse as means of conflict resolution, thereby adhering unilaterally to norms of discourse ethics at the first two levels of their truthfulness, like for instance honesty, transparency, recognition of equal rights for all as discourse partners, etc. This can be unacceptable for themselves or irresponsible in respect of their conventional obligations, like for instance in the role as parents, as a company chief executive, as a politician, etc. Precisely due to reason of ethics of responsibility, it has to be permissible in such a case for speech actors and actors to enforcedly abolish their truthfulness on the first two levels in favor of strategic counter-strategical speech acts and acts. However, the following becomes apparent in this scenario which corresponds to Arbitz Part B. Precisely under those discourse adverse conditions, quite on contrary to the first case, under either conditions, the third level of truthfulness obtains its, its actual meaning. Namely, at this third level, speakers and actors can claim and justify on the grounds of ethics of responsibility, why they enforcedly have to decide to act in a strategic, counter strategical manner. That means that at this level, their acts have to be justified truthfully as acts with effect and direct and indirect consequences, even including future impact and their consequences for even those who are only affected potentially towards the real and the ideal unlimited community of discourse. Even the interests of aggressors who deny discourse have to be investigated and reformulated where necessary in order to be re represented argumentatively, argumentatively, argumentatively as justified interests in discourse. Thus, Arthur's demand that primordial discourse even has to stay valid under discourse adverse conditions as part B can be satisfied at the third level of truthfulness of each speaker and actor. As shown in my first lecture, referring to part A, even a discourse denier has to justify his denial of discourse at the third level of truthfulness as an action with effect, direct and indirect consequences. In so doing, he remains non circumventably in primordial discourse contrary to his own intention. Correspondingly, in this lecture, we can see that those actors who under discourse adverse conditions and forcibly have to abolish the norms of discourse ethics at the first two levels of truthfulness, nevertheless, at the third level of truthfulness, they have to justify this decision as an action with effect, direct and indirect consequences. In so doing, they remain non circumventedly in primordial discourse as well. Thus, on the one hand, the change of discourse and the adherence to norms of discourse ethics can be cancelled, however, preserving them and lifting them up to a higher level at the same time. Referring to this, I would like to briefly remark 
that the German term Aufheben can be defined just in this threefold meaning of to cancel, to preserve, and to lift up. Why Hegel uses the term Aufheben in its threefold meaning to explain what happens when a thesis and an and antithesis interact and subsequently sublate into their synthesis. Thus, we can now say that on the one hand, in part B, the duty to comply with norms of discord ethics is aufgehoben within the meaning of cancelled. However, on the other hand, at the same time, Compliance of norms of discourse ethics are aufgehoben in the meaning of preserve, so that they can be aufgehoben within the meaning of picked up at the higher level in respect of the third level of truthfulness. At this level, discourse and its norms reappear non circumventably for justification of those strategic, counter strategical speech acts and acts used in conflicts. This way, the aspect of ethics of responsibility within the meaning of cancelling norms of discourse ethics at the first two levels of truthfulness is not any longer contradictory to the ultimate foundation and its implication on the ethics of responsibility. I thus believe that we can say that the contradiction we charge Apple with by introduction of Part B and its aspect of ethics of responsibility is resolved. As the aspect of ethics of responsibility gained by the ultimate foundation now remains at the third level of truthfulness. It seems to me that my solution also matches Abel's concept when he says strategic action in regards its goal and application has to be consensually agreed in the sense of a regulative idea by co-responsible actors of the primordial community of communication as an existing instance in respect of judgments of situations in part B, which are contrafactually anticipated as an ideal community. Indeed, it is not clear why this consensual agreement should be valid only in the sense of a reg regulative idea, and why co-responsible actors of the primordial community should only be understood as counterfactually anticipated ideal community. Rather, in reality, at least in democratic societies, discourse of justification at the third level of truthfulness in fact takes place in real discourses at many different platforms, like for instance in parliaments, at congresses, at committees, boards, and notably social media, which also includes public reasoning, and even extend into discourse adverse fields like, for instance, dictatorships through the internet. As at these places, not only partially strategically undermined discourse in regard to conflicts of interest is held but rather strategic counter-strategical actions against third parties are questioned and just justified discursively. The compromise of an anticipation of discourse in full internal, however, is only necessary in such situations whereby an individual has to decide under time pressure or is exposed to a criminal environment on its own. In both cases, in the anticipated as well as in the factually held discourse of justification, the point
point is that justification is required for each gradual deviation of discord as a good act. On the other hand, the point of part B is that a decision to enter into a discourse with an adversarial party is also required to be justified from an ethics of responsibility point of view. For, by such a purpose of discourse, one could endanger oneself or third parties, for instance, by loss of time or by disclosure of one's own intended actions in case an adversary strategically abuses the situation for its own purpose. At this point, I would like to clarify the point of this lecture on the basis of this sketch. En lo que sigue se va a aclarar los puntos señalados aquí de acuerdo con el esquema que está en el pizarrón. So in the first case discussed here, Por lo que en el primer caso discutido aquí, which is characterized by ideal conditions, que se caracteriza por las condiciones ideales, in respect to reciprocal compliance of norms, eh, de, con respecto al cumplimiento de las normas, cumplimiento recíproco de las normas, of both levels of truthfulness, en ambos niveles de la veracidad. The third level of truthfulness El tercer nivel de veracidad is redundant. Es redundante. So this was a, in the first in the first um, case here. En el primer caso, aquí señalado. We can speak in the in sense of part A. Podemos hablar de acuerdo con el sentido de parte A, de la parte A. Of ideal conditions. De las condiciones ideales. And in this condition, under these conditions, the third level of truthfulness. Y en estas condiciones el tercer nivel de la veracidad. At which we have to justify. En el que tenemos que justificar. The strategic speech acts and acts. Las los actos de habla, así como la, los actos estratégicos y estra, yeah. estratégicos y contra estratégicos. As well as the truthful speech acts in the sense of compliance with the norms, the ethical norms. Así como la, lo, los actos de habla y las acciones veraces a nivel de las normas de la ética discursiva. This is redundant for part A. Esto es redundante para la parte A. Since, due to the ultimate foundation, puesto que debido a la fundamentación última, speech acts and acts solving conflicts by discord ethical means, los actos de habla, así como los actos que se resuelven mediante las normas de la ética discursiva, under compliance of norms of discord ethics, y el cumplimiento con las normas mismas, are just justified per se. I'm sorry. Uh, they are justified per se. Uh, se, justi se justifican en sí, uh, por sí mismas. Um, however, um, however, in part B, Sin embargo, en, en la parte B, under discourse adverse conditions, en condiciones advers, en condiciones discursivas adversas, the third level of truthfulness, el tercer nivel de la veracidad, obtains its actual meaning. Eh, obtiene su significado real. So once again, namely at this third level, a saber que en este nivel, en este tercer nivel. Speakers and actors can claim and justify. Los hablantes, así como los agentes, pueden asumir, así como justificar. On the grounds of ethics of responsibility. Con base en la ética discursiva, o más bien, eh, con base en la ética de la responsabilidad. Why they enforcedly have. Oh. Yeah. 
yeah, have to decide to act in a strategic manner. Porque a fuerzas tienen que actuar de una manera estratégica. Or in spite of the discourse adverse condition. O a pesar de las condiciones discursivas adversas. Try to comply the discourse ethical norms. Los agentes así como los hablantes eh, tienen que cumplir con las normas de la ética discursiva. ¿Tienen preguntas hasta aquí? Me causa un poco de problema el Afghan Given. Parece que hay un hay un cambio en el método. Hay un cambio en el método con la pregunta de Afghan Given. A mi parecer en la parte A Yeah. He says that the, the, the sketch is very clear, but he has a problem with uh, what it has to do with this. Yeah? You uh, want uh, to know what, what the. With the yeah, okay. Yeah, right. Quieres saber, eh, compañero, que, uh, cómo involucra el esquema de la cuestión de la Pero con el, le, la parte A. Pero, uh, with, with regards to part A. Mm -hmm. ¿Se resuelve de forma trascendente? ¿Es pregunta o es declaración? No, es, estoy... Ah, ok. Estoy... Afirmando. Ok. Otra vez, ¿se resuelve desde el punto de vista trascendente? Ajá, puede ser un método. Es resolved uh, in a transcendental way. Y okay. la parte B, and dialéctica. Y part, part B es resolved dialectical. Yeah, it's not... That's not the part A, it's part B. But you are very right to ask this because no, I, I really forgot <laughs> just a, but to show. <laughs> so, what is aufgehoben is not a part A. Lo que no, lo que es aufgehoben no es parte A. What is aufgehoben is the um, the norms. Lo que es aufgehoben son las normas. Of the discourse ethics. De la ética discursiva. This, yeah, what we in the last lecture Lo que vimos en see la última conferencia. That this is identical. Que son yeah. idénticos. The norms, uh, the norms of being truthful at the first two levels and. Son idénticas las normas de ser veraz en los in the first two levels. No. Yeah. Okay. This. Okay. You're right. It, In the last lecture, we could see that the norms of discourse ethics. En la última conferencia vimos que en la, con las normas de la ética discursiva. Are equal to the truthfulness on it at its three levels. Son okay. iguales a las normas en los tres niveles. But now we have Pero. the problem of the part B. Pero ahora tenemos el problema de la parte B. Of the real conditions, de las condiciones reales, which are discourse adverse, que son adversas discursivamente. And the, what we said in the beginning, y lo que dijimos al inicio, it is um, from the view of ethics of responsibility. Es desde el punto de vista de la ética de la responsabilidad against others, and also contra la ética de arte, for myself y con para mí misma también. It is not acceptable anymore. Esto ya no es aceptable. To comply with these norms of, on this, at these three levels. Que no okay. es aceptable cumplir con las normas en estos tres niveles. And now it happens with the outfit. Y eso es lo que sucede con el nuevo so, outfit. Now, in this discourse, adverse conditions of part B. Y así tenemos las condiciones adversas de la parte B. We have to cancel these norms. Tenemos que suprimir las normas. First meaning of Aufgeben. Ese es el primer sentido o el primer significado de Aufgeben. But same time we preserve them. Pero al mismo tiempo las estamos preservando. Second meaning. Ese es el segundo significado. 
and same time yeah, you lift like them up. Los, los elevamos, elevamos. At the third level of al tercer nivel de la veracidad. Which means the justification. Lo cual significa que es la justificación. Of my decision. De mi decisión. If I want to remain. Si es que yo quiero par permanecer. To act in a discourse. Para actuar. Ethical way. De una or, manera discursivamente ética o bien. Or better. In a strategic way. O también de una manera estratégica. I have to. Justify this. Tengo que justificar esta decisión. With truthful argumentation. Con una argumentación veraz. In the sense of level one and two of truthfulness. En el sentido de yeah. los niveles uno y dos de la veracidad. For example. Por ejemplo. I have to argumentate honest, transparent. I have to provide Tengo good reasons. Que dar razones de acuerdo con la honestidad y la transparencia. For, yeah. I have to, to provide good reasons for speech acts and acts. También tengo que dar buenas razones para las, eh, los actos de habla, así como las acciones. Towards others as discourse partners. Hacia otras personas como participantes discursivos. Means accepting them as them as um, partners with equal rights. Y esto significa aceptar a los participantes discursivos como so, personas con eh, con derechos. Igual de derechos. Igual de derechos. So that's why we have lifted up this. We cancel them in the action in the moment. I'm sorry again. We cancel the norms only in the moment of action. They're not the, only in the very moment, the actual moment. So they're not for the actual moment? Sorry? I, I, I just couldn't yeah. hear you. We, we, in, the, in the discourse, adverse conditions. Por lo que podemos in. actuar en condiciones advers, adversas. Yeah. We cancel the norms. Cancelamos, suprimimos las normas. Yeah, okay. No, I, in the moment of action, uh, just yeah, in the, in the very, yeah, that's what I mean, yeah, in the yeah. very actual moment. Ah, yeah. 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 In the moment of llevar a cabo una acción yeah. en la realidad es cuando yeah. estamos cancelando las normas. But on the level of justification. Pero en el nivel de la justificación. I still. Aún yo tengo la obligación. Have to comply. Cumplir con las normas. So. De modo que. We can com we can fulfill. Podemos cumplir. What Apple is demand, it demands. Con lo que exige Apple. That we remain in primordial, um, non-subjectable discourse. Que permanezcamos dentro del discursi, discurso irrebasable. In spite of. A pesar de. Um, Cancelling these norms. De su, a pesar de suprimir las normas. In the actual acting en el momento en que se lleva a cabo la acción Out of the of, of of desde la perspectiva de la ética de la responsabilidad el problema de Apple es que no podía dar cuenta de cómo debía funcionar esto so, a few critics, they said, hmm, Por lo que hubo me, algunos críticos <laughs> que, <laughs> pues... <laughs> that was always his problem, yeah? So, and I think with this side level of truthfulness, we can now finally show... Por lo que con este tercer nivel de la veracidad, por fin podemos demostrar... How we really can fulfill his idea of staying in primordial discourse. Cómo podemos realmente... Eh, cumplir con la, la idea, lo idóneo de la ética discursiva. Yeah. But on the other hand, Pero por otra parte, actually not. tampoco no, es así. No, no. <coughs> so, and that is, it remembers us um, to the example. En esto nos recuerda el ejemplo of the last lecture. de la última conferencia. We talked about the discourse scenario. So we can see it was the same. He, he um, 
he re aggressed, he aggressed the discourse, or he think. Salió a del discurso, pues. By denying, he aggresses the discourse. Who, but, or, or, or an actor? I'm sorry. I'm, uh, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, who aggresses from the discourse? The last time, we mm -hmm. talked about the discourse denier. En la última conferencia hablamos de aquella persona que niega el discurso. The critic, he el crítico said, que, who tried to make the obligation que trataba de hacer que la obligación against Athens, um, the ultimate foundation, bueno, un argumento en contra de la última fundamentación de Apple regards the non of discourse. con respecto a la irreversibilidad del discurso I, I can deny the discourse. Why not? So that, that's always no se I puede negar can. el discurso mismo aquellas per But, yeah. las personas que tratan de negar el discurso están entrando en un argumento también por lo que I'm going to add a little thing here. por lo que están entrando en una contradicción Sí, para aquellas personas que no estuvieron la, la vez pasada. Yeah, but at the same time he thinks. Pero al mismo tiempo la persona que niega eso piensa. He's exciting the discourse. Está saliendo del discurso. Es at the same time he's human at this level. Y sin embargo permanece en ese nivel. Everybody can ask them. And how can you justify? Por lo que todo el mundo le puede preguntar a la persona que niega el discurso, ¿cómo puede justificar ese argumento? So, yeah. so he remains in this verse. He is imprisoned. Está, en, <laughs> está encarcelado dentro del discurso, el que niega el discurso. There's no um, possibility to flee. <laughs> no hay manera de escapar del discurso, pues. And that is, and that's important. That's not. Some critics say to Apple, they said he wants to enforce people to this course. Yeah? Las críticas de Apple estaban en el sentido de que Apple parecía querer forzar a los demás dentro del discurso. But it, is, it was not Apple who was enforcing. Pero no era Apple quienes estaba forzando a las personas. It is our, our, yeah, it is. It is in the language we speak act and act and think. Está en, is... en la lengua misma, en el lenguaje, en esto de los actos de habla. Yeah, sometimes that's um, implicit. Yeah. Es implícito, pues. <laughs> so, okay, then we continue. Or is there any other question? Hay otras preguntas. Sí, 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 sí. Tiene otras preguntas. Creo que no me quedó muy claro lo del método. Sí. The method is not quite clear. Uh, sorry? The method is not quite clear. Uh, okay. The thing is that I, I believe that the third level, which is in the part B. Yeah. El compañero está diciendo que hay niveles dentro de parte B. Is inside the part A. Que está dentro de parte A. Because it's implicit in the norms of the, the norms of the script. Porque yeah, están no vistos so dentro de las normas discursivas. It's equal to the yeah. short full speech act and act, and when it leaves. A ver. <laughs> yeah, es, son frases dentro de los actos de habla. On the one hand, you are right. Por una parte, tienes razón. I have said the same myself. I said so in the last lecture. Y eso lo aclaré en la última conferencia. But. Sin embargo. What I, what I want to point out now is Lo que quisiera señalar ahora es que if you imagine the si ideal conditions, si te imaginas las condiciones ideales, what for you need the level of justification? ¿Dónde necesitas el nivel de justificación? It only um, obtains uh, its actual meaning. Solo cobra su significado real. If I in the in the in the discourse adverse non-ideal um, circumstances, en circunstancias no ideales de la, del discurso, because under ideal conditions, porque en circunstancias ideales, per se, it is it is justified 
se justifica. ¿no? That everybody talks and debates and just in Se justifica que todo el mundo habla, yeah. debate dentro del discurso. Yeah, okay. <laughs> So on the one hand you're right. Por lo que por una parte tienes toda la razón. You can recognize this level. Se puede observar, se puede reconocer, reconocer este nivel. By reflection. Of the, of, by, by reflection. A través de la reflexión. Of the, of the presuppositions. A través de la reflexión de las presuposiciones. Del discurso. Which we always already have to accept. Que when ya de por sí tenemos que aceptar cuando. Yeah. Estamos en el discurso. But you don't use it. Pero no los in utilizas. The ideal no but, utilizas but, las normas yeah. en condiciones ideales. And, but under, under discourse adverse conditions where we Pero have en condiciones to, discursivamente adversas. Where we have to cancel the norms. Donde tenemos que suprimir las normas. Then we have to use entonces, norms for justification. entonces tenemos que utilizar esta parte para la justificación. Tienen yeah. alguna otra pregunta antes de que continuemos? Tienen con toda la confianza, exprésenla y ahorita la, la traducimos rápido. ¿Todo está bien? ¿Está claro? ¿Sí? Entonces para continuar. ¿Sí? Está muy bien. Más que ahora, concluyendo este state that the discourse of justification for each and every case in reality requires a mediation between consensual, communicative, communicative and strategic rationality. Yeah. As right, expressed... Right, so just wait till they catch the text. Oh, oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> In this way, we can now conclude. That is too far. Arguing with you valid norms, that's, that's that, yeah, a, 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 a little bit, a little bit further back. Uh, stop. No, no, no. Okay, progress. Just that way. And progress. Stop, stop, stop. stop. And thus we can now concludingly, concludingly state that the discourse of justification for each and every case in reality requires a mediation between consensual, communicative and strategic rationality as expressed by Arvid. Mm -hmm. For this, however, it is necessary to clarify in the first place which kind of criteria should be applied for this mediation. This leads us to the question which transcendental pragmatic possibilities of differentiation of moral norms of discord ethics can be recognized based on the ultimate foundation complemented by the three levels of truthfulness. Arnold himself distinguishes between you valid norms in the term of Fabermas, resulting from practical discourses which are conducted in accordance with the principle of universalization. On the one hand, oh, sorry, I have to say this sentence again, was not understand. Abel dis himself distinguishes between you valid norms resulting from practical discourses which are conducted in accordance with the principle of universal 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 Thank you. 
On the one hand, and the basic norms of discourse ethics, which correspond directly to the presuppositions of argumentative discourse, on the other hand. The U valid norms are only provisional or fallible, respectively. However, the norms of discourse ethics are non circumventable precisely because the primordial discourse by itself is non circumventable. Subsequently, I would like to additionally differentiate the norms of discourse ethics in consideration of the just now clarified Aufhebung of the norms of discourse ethics at a certain level of truthfulness, as well as Arthur's guidelines of the principle of complementarity. Doing so, I would like to suggest the following four categories, categories of norms of discourse ethics. Discourse ethical norms of the first order. These norms correspond to those presuppositions of ideal discourse which on the one hand can be fulfilled with certainty and on the other hand have to be cancelled if necessary in respect to discourse adverse conditions. These norms are the norms at the first two levels of truthfulness. For instance, norms like honesty, transparency, raising of validity claims, superior reasoning of arguments, recognition of discourse partners with equal rights, orientation towards consensus, etc. Secondly, discourse norms of the second order. These norms correspond to presupposition of the a priori of discourse of the real community of discourse, respectively to the presuppositions of possibility of realization of discourse in reality, like, for instance, the prohibition to kill, the duty to save human life, the prohibition of mental and physical use of force, prohibition to exploit human beings, right of freedom of speech, right of self-determination, and political participation, etc. Let me briefly sharpen the essence of this category of norms by using the following examples. One, I met once I met this person who used the slogan, no people, no problem. This absurd attitude ironically clarifies. Oh, I'm too. Uh, I forgot to wait for you. Sorry. No, no, that's all right. Go ahead. I have to. Uh, oh, you must do one. Okay, okay. <laughs> this absurd attitude ironically clarifies exactly the point that in situations of conflict, it is absolutely no option to solve problems by killing people or imprison them or deprive them of their freedom of speech, etc. Thus, these norms correspond to the a priori of the real community of discourse. Bueno, esta es una añadidura que me pasó brevemente aquí la doctora y les traduzco in situ. Sí. Es previo al 3, ¿no? Eh, sí, es previo al 3 de las normas de la ética discursiva. ¿Se corresponderían a las normas de la... Al, a ver, ¿qué? ¿Dos? Sí. sí. Las normas de la ética dos, discursiva dos. de segundo orden. Sí, eso es lo que voy a traducir brevemente. Corresponde a las normas de la ética discursiva de segundo orden. Y dice aquí, brevemente quisiera aclarar la esencia de esta categoría de normas al utilizar el siguiente ejemplo. Una vez conocí a una persona que utilizó, eh, bueno, que dijo que sin gente no hay problemas. Esta actitud absurda, irónicamente aclara exactamente el punto en que las situaciones de conflicto en absoluto es una opción resolver los problemas al matarlas o encarcelarlas o negarles su libertad de expresión, etc. Así, estas normas corresponden a la priori de una comunidad real del discurso. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. um, thirdly, uh, thirdly. Uh, discourse ethical norms of the third order. 
These norms correspond to the approximation of the real conditions towards the ideal conditions of discourse according to Arthur's principle of complementarity, like, for instance, duty of education towards enlightenment, duty of educationally enabling argumentative discourse, reduction of discrimination, reduction of injustice and inequality between rich and poor, educated and uneducated, etc. Fourthly, discourse ethical norm of the first order. This is the previously introduced non-circumventable non norm of the duty of ethics of responsibility to justify each and every rational speech act and act in case of doubt at the third level of truthfulness. And this norm of justification, the norm of the first order, reoccur as being ausgehoben. At the same time, this norm of justification is oriented towards the norms of the second and the third order concerning realization of discourse in reality and approximation of the real conditions towards ideal conditions of discourse. So shall we make an, an interruption for questions? Preferring this four levels, the four or categories, or shall I continue? Continuemos o hay preguntas hasta aquí. Podría explicar este cuarto porque no venía en la traducción. Ok. O sea, la, la traducción terminó en según yo y no, la última oración no estaba. La última oración. ¿Quién no fue la doctora? Esa, de tres donde se añadió un. Bueno, no, ahorita en el cuarto. Ajá, pero aparte que dijo la doctora no estaba en la traducción. Ah, sí, no, no puse atención. Eh, si caben, en este SATS, en este eh, APSATS, eh, yeah. ADIRT. Oh. En, el, en, en el resumen o en la... Ah, no, hay un punto 4. Ah, ya, 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 Uh, this norm of the, these norms of justification, the norms of the first order, reoccur as something yeah. alcoholic at the same time. Yeah, yeah, happened, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, this, the, this norms, this, this justification is yes. oriented. So, I that's yeah, those norms are oriented, it's oriented towards the norms of the second and third order. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the blood? Concerning realization of discord, or I, may, I described it a little bit more. Discord, uh, okay. Concerning realization of discord, lo cual tiene que ver con eh, again concerning the uh, concerning realization of discord in reality. Lo cual involucra la realización de la, del discurso en la realidad. That was the third order. Ese es el tercer orden. No, the second. The second order. Yeah. And approximation. Y la aproximación. Of the real conditions. De las condiciones reales. Towards ideal conditions. Hacia las condiciones ideales. These are the norms of the third order. Estas son las normas del tercer orden. And the justification is orientated on this. To y la justificación se orienta hacia yeah. Now let us ask the question how mediation between moral discourse and strategic reason could be realized by orientation to these four categories of basic norms of historical ethics. Let us start with the following consideration. Problems of application of norms in reality are characterized by situations whereby two valid norms compete. For instance, the U-valid norm which prohibits to steal could be opposed to a basic norm of discourse ethics referring to the second category of norms above in regard to the duty to 
save human beings, whereby it is irrespective whether the competition of norms is caused by external circumstances or by non-compliance with norms by other actors. Rather, the decisive factor is that the necessity of to act strategically by having to cancel at least one norm is forced by the fact that otherwise another norm could not be complied with. So this is the characterization of the problem of part B here. Yeah? Thus, mediation between discursive and strategic reason can only imply that norms have to be evaluated from a hierarchical point of view in order to obtain a justifiable decision which favors one norm over the other. Therefore, I would like to attempt to find a hierarchy for the U valid norms and the four categories of basic norms of discourse ethics listed above. Initially, one could state that in situations of conflict, the duty to comply with norms of discourse of the first order um, <laughs> Initially, one could state that in situations of conflict, the duty to comply with norms of discourse of first, of first order these are the norms of the both first level of truthfulness, may be abundant rather than the norms of discourse of the second order. Since, in situations whereby discourse itself is prevented, it is a kind of natural choice to abandon those norms which are specifically provided for application in discourse. Furthermore, these norms of the first order may be cancelled in discourse adverse circumstances precisely because of the fact that in discourse of justification at the third level of truthfulness, they reappear as outgroup within the meaning of lifted up at this level, as explicated further above. In contrast to this, if discourse norms of the second order are not complied with, like, for instance, the prohibition to kill, it implies that these norms are cancelled finally and absolutely. This also implies that the possibility of return into discourse is cut off, as these norms are the norms of the a priori of discourse, of the real community of discourse. According to this criterion, of the a priori of discourse of the real community, one can also state that in a given situation in which, for example, the prohibition of killing competes with the saving of life, death of those who deny discourse has to pre be preferred, mostly the aggressors. So far, we can say that dispensation of norms of the second order weighs more profoundly than dispensation of those, those of the first order. That means lying, cunning, deceiving, etc. has to be preferred over killing, mental and physical use of force, deprived freedom, etc. Therefore, in many cases, referring to part B, in which the prohibition to lie competes with the prohibition to kill, as discussed in philosophy and especially amongst discourse ethicists, I would like to argue in terms of the suggested hierarchy of preferring norms of the second order over norms of the first order. For instance, in the well-known case debated amongst Kant and Constant, regards a situation in which a murderer is standing in front of the door and asks for a hidden person he actually intends to kill. Applying the suggested hierarchy, one can now argue that the norm of the prohibition to kill, which calls for death to the preservation of human beings as discourse partners, is more essential than the norm of honesty. It is interesting to see that in most 
philosophical debates, this is already presupposed without even being justified. Next, I would like to plead for the new valid norms to be classed in between norms of the first order and of the second order. Since, on the one hand, these norms are only provisionally valid, whereby their valid validity cannot compete with the necessity of norms of the second order, which refers to the a priori of discourse of the real community. On the other hand, these norms, as a result of consensus-orientated practical discourses, are more essential than norms of the first order in the sense of truthfulness at its two first levels. Since, according to Apple's principle of complementarity, sociocultural socio circumstances gave by new valid norms in respect of the realization of ideal conditions of discourse ought to be preserved stringently. To illustrate this intermediate position of the u norms within the suggestive hierarchy of norms, let us return to the case of competition between the prohibition to steal and the duty to save human beings, like for example from starvation. According to our hierarchy, we have to abandon the prohibition to steal in favor of the duty to save human beings from starvation. However, if it, be, if it would be possible to rescue from starvation by lying, this would be even better option than stealing. Still, I'm not sure whether it is also possible to seek out a hierarchical order for norms of second and third order. Perhaps norms of the second order can be valued to be more essential than those of the third, since the latter are merely orientated on ideal conditions of discourse in the long run, in the sense of a regulative idea, and hence are not as essential for the present moment compared to the norms of the second order, which refer to the a priori of discourse of the real community here and now. Nevertheless, for instance, during the debates concerning his release from unjustified Turkish imprisonment, Denis Yücel apparently made a different evaluation of these norms. He emphasized that he did not want to be freed based on a dirty weapons deal between Germany and Turkey. By saying this, he preferred the norm over the third, of the third order which refers to the development of the real conditions of discourse in direction of ideal conditions in the sense of a regulative idea over his own freedom in the sense of a norm of the second order in regards to real conditions of discourse. Such brave truthfulness cannot reasonably be expected from everybody. Rather, everybody has to judge for himself the reasonableness of being truthful in light of death, torture, and imprisonment. Not everybody can be like Socrates, who accepted death to assume responsibility for his own truthfulness. Thanks so much.